Hey folks, I'm joined with a couple good friends of mine. This is Sean Stone, Matt Lane, and Jason Barlow. I'll put links to all their stuff down below. Be sure to check that out. Uh, but we're over here pestering Sean, and we figured since I've got my camera with me, we might as well just make something. Not exactly sure what, uh, but I'm sure we can come up with enough scrap woods to make something. So stick around, and I guess you'll find out what it is. The project that we ended up going with is a pocket holes bar stool, or in this case, it's going to be a shop stool. Uh, but it was made out of nothing but shop materials, just some scrap stuff that Sean had laying around. And it only took like an hour and a half to make. It was a very quick and easy project to knock out. Uh, also, if you're interested in a free set of plans for this, I made this a couple years ago. And I do have a free set of plans available on my website. So we started the project with the seat. And uh, Sean is using a piece of scrap 2x12, cutting it to final length at the miter saw. And Jason is ripping the seat to its final width at the table saw. Now nothing on this project, absolutely nothing on this project ended up being square. This was all just a little bit off here, a little bit off there, but it's just, it's just a shop chair, it's a shop stool, and structurally it'll stay together and probably take a lot more abuse than what we think. So uh, it, it, it's all worked out in the long run. Now for the legs we're using another piece of the same scrap 2x12 material and one of the advantages of using these wider boards to get smaller boards out of is you can avoid all the small little defects. So by ripping off the end or the, the, the side sections we can avoid that knot you see right there in the middle and we get some nice clear leg material. Now to make the compound angled cuts on the top and bottom of the legs uh, we ripped this one piece of scrap wood at 45 degrees and that way uh, you can put them together on the miter saw and rest your leg pieces on top of that on it. So they're basically resting on one of their ends, uh, one of their edges as opposed to a flat face. And this allows you to just rotate the saw at that one angle you want instead of making a compound angled cut uh, with the saw. Just saves a little bit more setup time by ripping one board as opposed to readjusting the saw and having to bring it back to 90 degrees when you're done. And to make the seat a little bit more comfortable to sit on, uh, Matt, I think this is Matt, made a couple roundovers. Yeah, it's Matt. Made a couple roundovers on all of the, uh, the top surfaces of the seat. Now, all of the rails are going to be the same, th same height. So we just ripped two pieces of this beautiful, absolutely beautiful, beautiful exotic CDX pine plywood that's been seasoning in Sean's shop for quite some time and uh, yeah just ripping two pieces of this and because all of these are the same height um, it's easy to cut them all at the same time so we stacked them top to bottom and Jason can make all of the rail cuts uh, together that way all of your left or your left and right mating pieces are the same exact length and then your front to back mating pieces are the exact same length it's just a little bit more consistency for your cuts if you can batch them out at the same time the construction we're going with is just regular pocket holes and we are making two pocket hole screws on each end of each one of the rails and just the regular setup for three quarter inch thick stock. Now during assembly we are starting with the short rails because there's no way to get a drill in there if you start with the long rails and we are elevating the uh, rails by one quarter of an inch just to give it a little bit more visual appeal and with pocket holes uh, a deep amount of concentration is necessary. And because pocket holes are all the rage these days, we all took turns with the rest of the assembly. That way we could all get in on the action. And speaking of getting in on the action, you could just clamp this in place and prevent slipping that way. But if you've got an extra helping hand nearby to kind of hold things in place, then that would work too. Um, just whatever you have available. Clamp, hands, whatever. Um, also, it's very important to get really good camera angles so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, this is Sean's left shoulder. Uh, he's wearing a tan t-shirt, and I'm not exactly sure the t-shirt size, but that's irrelevant. And here we go back to the helping hands. We're all just trying to lend a hand there for some reason. And I guess this one didn't need that much helping hand pressure. And then there's a shovel, known as Matt's hand. There you go. And that's done. Oh, one more. 
Oh, camera tr tripod failure. And the final step is for Sean to use a Benford 6100 gravity clamp to assist uh, Jason in securing the frame to the bottom side of the seat. And then we get final approval from Matt. It's like a glove. Two sizes too small. <laughs> So we came over to Sean's shop without having much of a plan to make anything and ended up making a very functional shop stool out of some scrap wood that was just lying around. And it only took us like an hour, hour and a half, and there's a lot of laughs and just absolute craziness during the entire build. But this is Sean Stone, Matt Lane, and Jason Barlow. I'll put links to all their stuff down below. Be sure to check it out. They uh, Check out all the links. They make a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, but just a reminder that, uh, to just a reminder to just get out in your shop and make something and and have fun. Not everything has to be just absolute crazy perfection. Just have fun and make stuff. Thanks for watching. You guys take care and have a good day. Later. See you. Back. Be nice for your voice didn't crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah!